Hi, it's Wednesday, June 17th, 2020. My name is Noah Seeley, and welcome to my channel. So today I thought we would review another paper about reinforcement learning that actually relates to an idea that was mentioned in our last video, the DQN algorithm by the DeepMind technology team. This is actually a paper made by some of that same team after Google picked up the DeepMind's company. The paper today is called Prioritized Experience Replay by the Google DeepMind's team. Recall from the DQN video that experience replay was basically agents in a reinforcement learning algorithm that could store experiences from previous iterations and pool them all together in a replay memory. Throughout the algorithm, loss function updates randomly sample iterations from this replay memory. This was found to remove correlations found in local iterations, as well as average out iterations of learning in order to avoid getting stuck in a local minimum while using a greedy policy. Although that was a great find for the team, they found that using a finite space for the replay memory, also known as a sliding window, each new iteration overrides the oldest, which means they could be losing a very valuable iteration that a lot of learning is a occurring within. They suggest a better implementation would be to somehow bias better iterations and keep those around in the replay memory. So that's our quick recap of that paper. If anything related to reinforcement learning still seems a bit fuzzy, I invite you to go back and check out my two-part intro to reinforcement learning that I will link in the description below. They're quick videos and cover the definitions, processes, and applications used in reinforcement learning. If you think you're all caught up though, let's get into this new paper. I think I'm going to cover it in two parts again. So today we'll be going over the introduction, background, and prior prioritize replay sections. The paper starts off by basically explaining that agents learn through updating the parameters upon each iteration of training, basically discarding the information of each previous iterations for a new one. This comes with two issues. The updates are logically correlated, which break an assumption of independence, thus identical distribution, most gradient-based algorithms hold. And information from potentially important iterations will just get lost forever. A paper from 1992 called Experience Replay became an idea which was used in the DQN paper in 2013, and thus showed that a fix for these two issues existed. They say that this helped the agent learn from experience, which essentially made the algorithm cheaper as it learned less from directly interacting with its environment over and over again. As mentioned, the DQN algorithm uniformly samples all of the iterations from its sliding window of memory. Thus, as the paper says, on average sampled each iteration equally around eight times. The goal of this paper is to see if they can create a more efficient and effective algorithm by sampling a set of prioritized experiences more frequently than others. The paper says that this may be useful for the agent, as some iterations are just redundant, while others may be more useful to the agent, especially later on. This, in a way, creates a better learning environment for the agent, as they can sample from experiences that may yield more success. They will prioritize experiences with high expected learning progress and, spoiler warning, the prioritized experience learning implementation records faster performance on the Atari game benchmark. As for the background section, the idea of experience replay actually comes from literature in neuroscience. Prioritizing algorithms have also found success in previous papers that relate to modeled reinforcement learning and prioritizing explorative behaviors in agents. Along with this, other papers that use some sort of experience replay methods have found more success while being compared to those that don't. I believe that the takeaway from this section is that a lot of previous work's findings and successes have helped validate the need for testing of this hypothesis. Basically, I mean that all of this previous found success seems to have inspired the researchers with the idea that this may be a good method of improving their agent. The prioritized replay section is where a lot of the methods used for the implementation are found. The section starts by saying that the paper will be focused not around which experiences to store, but rather which to replay for the agent. The first subsection starts with setting up an understanding of what we could gain with the prioritized experience replay. Basically, this shows how two agents learn with the same replay memory on a difficult walking challenge. The only difference between the two agents is that one is able to consult an oracle, which greedily chooses memories to replay that will cut the most amount of loss from the agent's value function during training. On the right of this graph, we see just how much faster the agent with the oracle is able to learn the challenge, shown as this blue line opposing the black line. This example really shows just how much prioritized experience replay can benefit the learning of an agent. The next subsection discusses which parameter should be chosen in order to decide which experiences are valuable for the agent to prioritize. The researchers found that a good parameter to choose is one that tells how much the agent can learn with a given iteration known as its expected learning progress. This would show which iterations are able to offer the agent the most amount of learning and thus should be used. A value that appropriately 
represents this is called the TD error. The TD error is described as telling how surprising or unexpected a transition is. The graph shown in the left of this figure shows that in the sample example from the previous subsection, a greedy TD error prioritizing implementation will also reduce the amount of learning needed to achieve the goal. In the actual implementation, a binary data heap priority queue is used. This takes big O of 1 to find the maximum TD error and big O of log N to update priorities. The next subsection starts by saying there are a few issues with this greedy TD error approach. Basically, if a transition has a low value TD error because of the sliding window through memory, it may never be sampled for the agent to learn from. The algorithm is also sensitive to noise, such as from a stochastic reward spike that may not actually be valuable to the agent. Lastly, because the greedy implementation only samples a small subset of experiences, overfitting may occur as only iterations with the highest TD errors are being chosen over and over again. The solution the researchers came up to address these errors is a stochastic sampling method that walks a line between greedy sampling and uniform sampling. There are two variants of this following the distribution shown on the paper. One simply uses the direct prioritization, while the other takes into account a ranking system for each iteration. As shown on the graph in the figure to the right, both variants can outperform the greedy implementation in the original walking task. The subsection ends by showing off the implementation of this prioritization algorithm, which is shown here in the paper. The last subsection explains how a bias is introduced from this new method of sampling. The researchers aim to correct the bias from introducing a parameter called the important sampling or IS weights. They quote that the IS weights fully compensate for the non-uniform sampling. They basically explain that the bias means a lot less as the agent comes closer and closer to convergence as its training becomes very non-stationary anyway. So they've implemented a schedule of when to adjust the degree of bias that they are trying to counter, where they will combat this bias a lot less towards the end of training or closer to convergence. This important sampling also works with the stochastic prioritization algorithm to reduce gradient magnitudes in nonlinear function approximation, such as this case where deep neural networks are used like in the DQN agent. The paper states that this allows the algorithm to follow the curvature of highly nonlinear optimization landscapes because the Taylor expansion is constantly reapproximated. The subsection ends by saying that this new prioritized experience replay algorithm is combined with the state-of-the-art double DQN algorithm in order to make an agent that has the goal to outperform the previously used uniform sampling experience replay version of the agent. As discussed in the previous subsections, the prioritized experience replay algorithm uses both stochastic prioritization as well as important sampling methods. So yeah, that concludes part one of my discussion on the prioritized experience replay paper by the Google DeepMind team. I plan on posting a video of part two that goes over the rest of the sections in the paper soon. There were also some more technical bits in today's sections that I did not delve into. So as always, I've linked all resources that I've used in the description below for you guys to go check out yourselves. If you feel that I've missed anything or got anything wrong, please let me know in the comment section below. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.